Hello everyone. I'm going to be answering your questions in celebration of 30k subs. So uh, let's not waste any time. How did I start my channel and decide to talk about VTubing history and why am I named Depressed Nosagi? To answer this question, I'd have to tell you the story of how I made this channel actually. This channel has since existed in 2018 and at that time I just made League of Legends.exe videos. It's private now because it's cringe. Anyway, I stopped making those videos because I got burnt out real quick and decided to make Jojo memes instead before abandoning the channel altogether. But when the unspecified virus of unknown origin started fucking up the world, a lot of things happened to me. Future plans derailed, friendships and relationships lost, losing my social skills, burnout, isolation, losing my will to eat or do anything, existential crisis, and wanting to just curl up and die. You know, all those goodies a normal high school graduate suffers. That led me to depend on video games, and the video games I happened to play at that time was Genshin Impact especially the Inazuma release. I got so hyped and invested a lot of emotional energy into it since it was the only thing I was looking forward to every day, but the story fucking sucked. I mean, I enjoyed it overall, but the story was the one I was actually looking forward to the most. The story and the narrative is usually what I want from every video game, and I know expecting a good story is weird for a gacha game, but hey, Fate Go was my favorite gacha game and the story was fucking amazing, so I expected something of similar quality from Genshin Impact because it's a billion dollar fucking company, and the game's universe was really interesting. But my disappointment was so immeasurable, I had to return to this channel and shit on Genshin Impact. I then figured that I should become a Genshin Impact YouTuber, but while I was making my second video, I kinda lost interest in the game so I just stopped altogether. The reason I shifted to making VTubing commentary and history videos was because I saw a Facebook post about Karyo Coco and the China incident, and that fucking post had a lot of things wrong. I tried to correct it in the comments but I just got ignored and some of the people that did read it outright did not believe me because I didn't have sources. And if you watched my one hour Coco video, I was heavily, heavily invested in the Coco drama, but I couldn't fucking prove it. So I decided, fuck it, I'm going to make a video summarizing what exactly happened to Karyo Coco because there doesn't seem to be anyone making a comprehensive summary about the incident despite how fucking big it was. But uh, I procrastinated. For like, for months, I instead talked about anything else except the Coco incident. My first six videos actually didn't have scripts, I just had outlines, which is why some of the reasons and explanations I had there felt shallow, even to me now, since I didn't really think about it as much as I should have. At that time, I really didn't think about what I should name myself because I didn't expect anything to come out of the YouTube channel, it was just something I did to keep myself busy. I took on the moniker VTuber Historian because I really like the internet historian and I felt like his kind of content was ultimately what I wanted to replicate. I also wanted a similar avatar like his, where he had the Hide Your Pain Herald meme as his avatar, I wanted the Pain Peko avatar, and you can even see my first use of it on the Miko video. I just used the Pressed Nosagi as a placeholder name, but I got too lazy to change it and ended up using the easier to draw avatar that I use now. So it eventually just stuck I guess. The VTuber Historian name is really something I donned on myself accidentally and, and now I have this responsibility to shoulder it seems like. When did I fall into the rabbit hole and who was my first VTuber? Well, technically, the first VTuber that I actually liked was Kizuna Ai back in 2018. I followed a couple of VTubers then too, like Shibuya Hal, Tsukinomito, and even Yanners to a certain extent. But I fell off somewhere around 2019, when the whole clone drama took place. I only got back into it in early 2020 when the Asakoko commercial clip appeared in my recommended. It was this clip that got me into the rabbit hole back and ever since I've been here without any hope of getting out in the near future. A lot of drama was actually happening back then too, you know. If you think this year had too much drama, then get a load of 2019 and 2020. Prior to this, I've always been a 4chan lurker, so I naturally just lurked and started catching up to everything that happened while I was away. It's odd too because there are fuckers in there who are impersonating me or think that a particular user is me. I only lurk in 4chan. I like the confusion it causes though. If I was to give a VTuber a million subs or promote a VTuber outside Niji Sanji or Hololive, who would it be? Well, for shits and giggles, I'd choose Pipa because I want to see this artist's reaction if she suddenly gets a million subs overnight. As for underrated VTubers that I like, that's uh, that's tough. There's a lot of them I like, Pipa again is one of them, but she's a special case and I really don't want to have tourists suddenly invading their small communities and cause a lot of stress. But I'm pretty sure they'd appreciate it too. I'll just recommend Kahiru for now, she's great, and Rainho is pretty adorable. What's the process in making my videos? For the researching part, I actually spend most of my time collecting evidence and details. 
I've lived through most of the topics I plan to cover like the update shit show, the Nijisanji India dumpster fire, the Roa and Meru lawsuit drama, and other topics so the researching part is just me remembering what happened. But I also make sure to look for details and evidence by browsing through Reddit, 4chan, some Japanese websites that I shall not name, and relevant Discord servers. I always take everything with a pinch of salt though, especially if that info comes from 4chan. The challenge for me is to cover topics that happened before 2019 because I didn't really pay attention to anything back then. As for script writing, I don't know. I just organize and write what's on my mind and put in some jokes that suddenly pop up. I usually take about a week and a half to finish the video since I have college stuff, but on a break week, I can finish it in four. The recording part is actually the hardest process for me. My house has a lot of static and is kinda noisy, so I go into the quietest part of our house, which is this sweltering hot as shit storage room and hit record. I usually always suffer when I record too, and it's even worse when I find a mistake during the recording process or need to add a few things since I need to go back into that fucking oven of a room and record all over again. It's the most stressful part of my video making process, and, and it's kind of why I want to have my own office or studio. Who are my Oshis? Pecora is my number one. Putting my kayfabe aside, I genuinely think Pecora is the best VTuber in the world. I just love her. I don't even stick to her stream since I can't understand her, and if she graduates, I'm going to quit YouTube too. My other Oshis include Watame because I kinda need her to sleep these days, Watson because she's just one of those VTubers I respect the most, her streams are always usually wild too, Mito because she was the first one I discovered in Nijisanji and she's also pretty based, Risu because... I don't know why. <laughs> I just really love Risu for some reason. Pipa because she's based and she feels real. She's not. She's a very unconventional VTuber. Not everyone's going to like her, but the ones that do will absolutely love her. Kason because she's based and she's a legend. The thing about my Oshis is that when they stream, I usually just watch and don't interact with the chat. Because their chats normally go too fast and, you know, what's the point? I only recently started to participate in Risu and Pipa's chat though. Other than that, I don't really comment anywhere else. If Hololive were to expand to a new region or country, where do you think they would go? I think many regions of potential, but personally, I think there would be an Espanol branch soon. Not just for Hololive, but for Nijisanji too. The Spanish VTubing community on its own is fucking massive. I don't think any of them wants to stumble when they dip their toes there, so they need to do their due diligence. No, they need to do their extra diligence before they start entering that market. It's pretty tough in there as far as I've heard. What is the future of VTubers, their lifespan, and will they become as mainstream as Twitch streamers and YouTubers? This is an interesting question, one that actually deserves its own video because there's a lot to parse and break down. But uh, to summarize, I think VTuber has already become semi-mainstream, but you know, it's not mainstream yet, it's not, it's not XQC or Markiplier's level of big obviously, but you know, I don't think it's going to reach that point. Because while VTubing has garnered international and mainstream attention, its target demographic, which are weebs in all their forms, fujos, simps, and casuals alike, is pretty limited. In the end, VTubing is just a branch of the anime community, a niche of a niche. Despite Luxium's massive and consistent growth rate, Iron Mouse's mainstream presence and recent achievements, the global hit of Holofest and indies debuting every day, I feel like the industry is on a plateau for now. The growth is there but the VTuber gold rush is over. Has been for quite some time now. I think there has to be another innovative and massive push that gets the community some buzz again. Similar to how Holomyth shook up the entire internet. People may say that VTubing is the future of content creating but I disagree. There's just something about IRL streaming that VTubing can't match or defeat. Again, maybe I'll make another video talking about it soon enough. It's a really big question and I can't spend too much time about it in the Q&A. As for the lifespan of VTubers, it really just depends how long the VTuber is willing to stick with it. I don't think there's an average because they vary wildly, but if I was to shoot a shot in the dark, I'd say 4 years. Where do I come from? I live in 308 Nigra Arroyo Lane, Albuquerque, Albuquerque New, New Mexico. Mexico. Just kidding. <laughs> Seriously though, a lot of people already guessed it because my accent gives it away, but I hail from the worst country in Asia. The fucking Philippines. Who are your favorite clippers and content creators? My absolute favorite is Internet Historian. My other favorites also include Moist Critical, The Trash Taste Boys, Tear Zoo, Healthy Gamer GG, A Closer Look, and Dr. Bob. I don't really sub to clippers, but the ones I do are my absolute favorites, like uh, like Neko Mikuri, Holocrump, Mei Mei, Osekai, and Big Zim. What are your favorite tags and cultured anime, and have you fapped to a VTuber? NTR, Cream Pie, and Reverse Rap. 
My favorite cultured anime is Sakusei Byuto and Hajimeta no Hitozuma and literally everything that Auntie Chinos makes. I feel like that disgusted some of you. If so, fuck off. Also, no, I never actually fapped to a VTuber or any lewd art of them before, but that's because I can't fap to pictures. When I watch those kinds of content, it has to be animated and moving. Unfortunately, good VTuber animated hentai is scarce and there's a few bangers out here and there, but I've never actively fapped to them. But you know, you damn well know I'd be emptying my balls if Maniaki's Nagu Animation or Derpixon makes a Kalayopi Mori hentai or something. Am I a member for any VTubers or donated to any of them? I never spent a single cent on any online content except for a couple League of Legends skins 4 years ago. I'm pretty selective when it comes to using my money. It's an Asian thing I feel. The only time I joined a membership is Kizuna Ai when I wanted to confirm the existence of a certain members only post. So no, I'm not actually a member of any VTuber. I have actually donated to a VTuber though and that was last week to Risu. Because I fucking love Risu, I don't know why. Next from the press no sagi. Would I consider working in the VTubing industry and what talents do I have? I mean, if the pay is good and they're looking for a person with my skill set, then yeah, why not? As for my skills and talents, I don't really have talents I can brag about. I can't sing to save my life, I can't dance for a shit or fiddle with tech, I've become socially inept, and I'm only moderately decent in making art. I am confident of my writing and storytelling skills though. It's something that I've developed over the years. I mean, if I won a few local and online awards and even got a few literary agents praising and biting my manuscripts, that has to be an indication that I'm at least competent, right? What games do I play? God. College stuff has actually prevented me from playing too much video games these couple months. A few years ago, I used to play League, Genshin Impact, Valorant, Civ 6, and Minecraft all the time, but these days, I only really have time for Apex. What are my hobbies outside YouTube and VTubers? I like writing stories a lot, it's my favorite pastime. I also love cooking and I absolutely enjoy hiking and jogging. I used to do some gardening last year but I didn't have time for it anymore. I'd like to dip my toes into baking but my house doesn't have an oven so yeah. What motivates me to create content? Well, uh, I enjoy it. I think my favorite thing to do in the world has always been to create stuff regardless of what it is. I don't really have any motivation to create content, I just like the process of making it. But I'd be lying if I said I wanted to make this kind of content because I want to educate people or make the community better. I just make it because I like it. Did I expect to succeed this much? No, I don't think any small YouTuber will tell you they expect to succeed at all. Because we honestly don't. I was actually overwhelmed and scared when I started blowing up, especially when my Coco video got 50k views. The rest of my videos mostly never broke a thousand. I was actually scared that it might re-spark the drama. What is my plan for my channel and IRL? I actually intend to branch out. I got a lot of projects and video ideas to make and some of them I can't put in this channel, so I intend to open up another YouTube channel soon with more unhinged satirical and personal content. Like Charlie's YouTube channel or something. So I look forward to it. I also want to stream once I can access my ad rev money and get myself a good PC. I don't want to be a VTuber oddly enough. I kinda just want to be like Charlie or like the Trash Taste Boys, just more leaning towards VTubers on weeb stuff. This might change in the future but as of now, I'm not really up for it. As for my plans IRL, I don't know. Like many college students, I don't really have any direction in life right now. All I want to do is make story driven stuff like novels, movies, and even this YouTube stuff but I don't know how I'm going to do that and honestly I want to drop out. But you know, Asian culture and pressure, you have to go to school, education is expensive but important, heard, er, I get it, it's just extremely hard balancing them. Which is why I want to hire editors to lighten my load but uh, since I'm unable to take my ad rev money yet, I can't do that. I also don't want anyone to work for me without getting any compensation so until then I'll just have to suck it up and do everything myself. So uh, yeah, these are the questions that got my brain gears twisting. Again, I'd like to thank you guys for the support. Sappy shit is cringe, since, especially since I've thanked you guys for like the 50th time now. But it's just difficult to convey the gratefulness that I feel right now. Again, thank you for 30k subs and thanks for watching. That's it. See ya.